Since the VFL video was well received, I thought I'd venture across the Nullarbor to Western Australia, the world's largest state, Russian oblasts don't count, and check out the stadiums of the Western Australian Football League. Here are the Waffle Grounds. Claremont Oval, Claremont Tigers. As you can see, this ground has undergone a major renovation. Plenty of earth was moved and some aging stands were demolished. Built in their place is this rather nice modern stand made up entirely of covered seating in Claremont colours. That's not all that's getting built. The entire ground will soon be surrounded by luxury apartment buildings, collectively known as the Grandstand, which is quite fitting. I'm torn on whether I like that or not, but I suppose it would have made a ton of money. And money can be used to buy things. East Fremantle Oval is the regular home of the East Fremantle Sharks, but while this too is being redeveloped, not in the same way, they are playing at the Wacker, a famous old cricket ground that has recently been usurped by Optus Stadium with regards to international cricket so it's trying to find ways to become more financially viable. It's no stranger to footy though, it's even hosted some AFL games. Still, it does look a bit weird seeing goalposts here. Oddly enough, this ground is also undergoing a redevelopment to make it better suited to the waffle. That will involve some demolition work and excavation of the ends to reshape the field. However, it must be a less intrusive renovation as the club can still play here, obviously. Leaderville Oval, East Perth Royals and Subiaco Lions. It might be home to two clubs now, but it went about a decade without any waffle clubs playing here. Both the Royals and the Lions decided to move in in the early 2000s. I'm loving the variety of old stands on the western side of the ground. On the other side, there's a mix of grass berm and terracing. You may have noticed something odd about the ground though. A lot of Western Australian stadiums have this red staining about the place. I used to think that was from dust storms, but it's from the sprinklers that use bore water, I believe. I guess the sprinklers work overtime at this ground because it's pretty severe here. Still looks good. Rushton Park, Peel Thunder. Firstly, I like that they're called Peel and they play partly in teal. Not just because it rhymes, but it's an underrated colour. Secondly, I'm disappointed that their club song isn't based on Land Down Under. Could have been something like, Better Fear, Better Fear, Peel Thunder. To be fair, the club predates that song by a long way, and of course they would have to pay the Kookaburra Sits in the Old Gum Tree people for the rights. And they don't f*** around. Laugh Lane Park. Perth Demons and West Coast Eagles Reserves. This is the long time home of Perth, but West Coast only moved in in 2019. It's not just that their reserves play here, but it's now the West Coast Eagles training facility. West Coast is an AFL team for those that might not be familiar. After they redeveloped the ground, not only did they add another oval next door, but Laugh Lane Park now has a rather nice mix of an ultra modern building, an old school grandstand, and some more natural areas of seeding, a mix of terracing and grass sheltered by gum trees. It's a beautiful ground. I wonder how Perth feel about another club sort of moving in and taking over though. Fremantle Oval, South Fremantle Bulldogs. It's one of the larger venues in the league. A lot of that capacity is coming from the huge concrete terrace that wraps its way around the eastern wing which is quite uncommon in the waffle. As we've seen, it's usually grass. What is an even more unusual feature, if you want to call it that, is a ridiculously large gap between this stand and the field that acts as a car park. Ideally, that would be behind the stand. Speaking of behind the stand, it has a beautiful brick exterior. The ground is situated in a fairly historic area by Australian standards, so it fits in well. But yeah, this place has got a bit of everything. Bassendean Oval, Swan District Swans. In the rest of the world, a black swan event is something catastrophic. In Australia, it's just a picnic down by the lake. Bassendean Oval is not the oldest ground in the league, but it does have the most heritage listed features, 
these gates for instance. Inside matching the gates are some elegant looking old fashioned stands. When you combine that with the white picket fence that surrounds the field, it makes for quite a picturesque ground. But the venue's claim to fame has nothing to do with the architecture. It is that it was the first ground to use the siren which is synonymous with Australian rules football today. Arena Jundalup West Perth Falcons If you've watched the channel for a while, you will have picked up on the fact that I quite like a grass berm. And as you can see, this place has all the grass berm that there is in the world. That seems like a glorious place to watch the game from on a sunny winter's day. And a good thing about Perth is, there are plenty of sunny winter days. The stadium would be an entirely earthen bowl if it wasn't for the one and only stand over on the western side of the ground. That is actually connected to a small basketball arena and swimming pools. Those were the Waffle Grounds. As always, I like to pick a favourite at the end of the video, and this one was really tough. I think I'll exclude the Wacker because it's not the club's actual home. I'll go with this one. If you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing, and as always, thanks for watching, have a good one.